good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video. Welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi Tayutu. I'm a guy from Generation X, Bitcoin Generation X. And three and a half years ago, I decided with my wife and my kids to sell literally everything we own, go all into Bitcoin and start to travel the world. Yes, literally everything we own. We sold our house, we sold our company, we sold our cars, we sold our toys, we sold our shoes, everything and started traveling the world. Now three and a half years later, still traveling the world, coming to you guys from Alicante in Spain. In today's video, of course, talking about the Bitcoin price, but also looking at the DeFi industry and that we just surpassed the 9 billion mark of total value locked up in this DeFi industry. Looking at Bitcoin's dominance and the difference between Japan and the rest of the world. Talking about Binance that is now promoting Bitcoin in bus stops at London, way cool. And yes, of course, sharing some crazy cool charts in this Bitcoin part because Lisa is helping me with this. She did some cool TA of Bitcoin, Ethereum and the trade of the week, of course. And I will end the video why I believe that I and all my fellow Bitcoin Generation X people got fucked since we were born. Enjoy watching today's video, guys. Hi guys, I already did a show this morning again as you used to for me on every Monday, hard fucking show together with Sean and Lisa. So I will add some clips from that show into this one and I need to go and search for a next accommodation today and we are going to visit two of them. So that is why I don't have a lot of time to record this video. But of course, still interesting stuff that I want to share with you guys. Because did you just notice that the DeFi industry grew over 9 billion US dollar? I think we will soon enter the 10 billion area of DeFi. This is so big. I think this is comparable with the huge hype we saw in the ICOs in 2017. We are seeing this huge hype now in the whole DeFi industry, in this whole staking mechanism, and all these DeFi projects. If you take a look at the biggest one, Aave has already 1.7 billion US dollar locked up in their DeFi protocols. MakerDAO, the second biggest one, has 1.4 billion US dollar locked up. Then we get Balancer with 1.3 billion US dollar locked up and then Curve with 1.26 billion US dollar and then last but not least Yarn Finance with 950 million I think soon also 1 billion US dollar because YFI almost went all the way up to 40k it went down now for a correction to around 30k but maybe like in a few days or weeks you never know at this coin it will pop up all the way to 60k because there is only 30,000 coins available. So that is the scarcity this coin has. But again, even if it goes up with 200%, there are many other cryptos in this world that will go up with 200% as well. Yes, of course, YFI is really cool because the price is high. But if you look at the market as a trader or an investor, you just look at it how much profit you can make percentage wise and you know if you make 200% on a coin that is $1 or 200% on a coin that is $50,000 or $30,000 there is no difference it's still 200% if you invest 10k you just have a little bit more coins of $1 than you have of a coin that will cost you $10k dollar but if it goes 200% your investment of 10k will go 200% either way so that's very important to remember when you look at these charts and these crazy ass numbers of 40k per coin. I really liked a post that I saw about Binance. I did a tweet about it as well. Binance is now promoting Bitcoin and of course Binance itself on local bus stops at in London. So many bus stops in London, you will see this huge poster of Bitcoin. You see the evolution of like a stone coin to a silver coin to the euro or the pound, whatever, and then to Bitcoin. So the evolution of money, Binance doing great promotion there for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And of course with their own exchange because they are making it the onboarding to crypto more easy every time again. Let's take a short look at some charts guys. Let's take a look at a three day chart. This one, bam. On this three day chart, you can see that we try to reach 12K and that if we reach 12K, we will soon explode to 14K or to 16K. And then from 16K, we will see again a very healthy pullback, maybe even a pullback of like 30 to 40%. So at 16K, a pullback of 14%, 
would mean going back all the way down to 10, 11k again. So that will be a healthy pullback to continue the next run up in this huge bull run. So you have big waves and you have small waves in these big waves. But Lisa will tell a little bit more about it later in her TA part of this video. Into the charts very shortly, people, but I need to defend myself. I had a very early morning, actually. Yeah, with, he was on with a Tinder date, Green no, Day No, I wasn't. No, yeah. I was actually yes. was meeting with um, yeah. the people Ooh. from Emily Card who were sponsoring a, looking to sponsor an eSports team. So it was very interesting. But was it was it like a female manager of Emily Card or what was it? There is a new uh, female manager at Embley, actually. You'll, you'll, you'll meet her uh, probably next uh, week. Ah, he's like, yes. Yeah. Yes, so uh, good to see we're off to a flyer here today, as usual, people. <laughs> we have got some very interesting charts for you. It's been a very Diddy, interesting Diddy, week. Diddy's married, and, like, I've got a guy at the moment, so it's like we can stir you up all we want. You can yeah, so, indeed. So, you of can course, and, and, and you know what we, Lisa and I can do like, you know, sharing and scaring with each other. You can't, you can't yeah. join the Green Dildo party like you this. You can't join the Green Dildo party, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's Lisa and DD only. <laughs> oh. So we're, we're in the third wave, so we're in um, the first of the third internal. So if we, we put a, what I think where we are, if we put a um, waves on here, so we're going third. Let's change the color so we can see that we'll go white. So we've got in this wave here. So we've come up, we've completed this first wave. We're coming down. I think we've completed the correction and we're now within um, this third wave. So we're in the first of the third of the fifth for every, everyone playing at home. <laughs> so um, that puts us into this like sort of 12,000-ish pattern. We'll come down. There was a gap over the weekend, 11,600. Now, I put a chart up um, the other day about uh, CME gaps and how they don't need to be filled in any particular order. Uh, I'll bring that up in a minute. So, And then we'll go up for this um, major third wave, which is really going to be quite explosive and this is the green dildo so i thought last week we were already in and you know bitcoin decided to do the de wave which we don't always do so sometimes we stop at the c so it's like i always buy at the c wave and we came down and we did a, a d and an e wave um so the next wave so we'll drop down to probably about maybe 11 4 11 5 ish on this next wave down after our high here and then we'll go into our third wave which is always the strongest wave um, so that's going to take us to about 13 14 thousand um, you know so from sort of 11 and a half to that that's like a two and a half thousand dollar wave so um, you know that's that's a really big sort of profitable wave if we're you know even if you're in a low level margin 10% margin, you know, that's huge. So if you're trading with one Bitcoin, like two and a half thousand, 10 times, 25,000, massive amounts of money. So, um, you know, that's, that's the wave that you want to be in. So the third wave is always the best wave to be trading. And, and that's what I think Bitcoin's about to go into. So if we look at this, we, um, we, we're going to easily see 16, thousand within you know the next sort of maybe two to three months um if this keeps going on track so um if i can bring up i'll find the cme chart that i i had on twitter and um we can see that you know the, there's plenty of gaps in the chart and they they don't always get filled in time or on time so if we have a look this gap here um, it took about six or seven months to fill. But if we have a look at what the pattern is at this point, I just want you to really like look at this. So, you know, we've got this, this wave here. So we've got this gap down here, which we've got here on the chart. But we've also got this similar pattern where we got four higher lows. So this was our previous bullish pivot here, um, which we're sitting at around at this point. So we're actually sitting within the same pattern 
that we had before the all time high and with the same gap. And, you know, if you go back through Twitter and you go back through the sentiment at this time, it was really, really bearish where people were saying, we need to fill this CME gap. It's, you know, it's there, it's, it needs to be filled. Same thing. It's exactly the same. So, and it took, six months, seven months to fill. We didn't fill it until we came back for this correction. So this is the thing. So this could go up to our 26,000 before we even come back down and think about filling this gap. So um, that kind of makes me believe that even when we do correct, when it's higher up, we're not going to go sort of beyond sort of you know, that $9,000 mark, I think it's going to, that's going to be our next low. So when you, you look at where the gaps were, so um, we did go back, but this was a trading engine failure. But um, so, yeah, so identical pattern to what we have now. For everyone that is bearish on Twitter that is saying that gaps need to be filled, they don't need to be filled in any particular order and they, they kind of get filled when they get filled. And, you know, so these, these all took over a month to fill. It was not like we went straight up and we filled a gap or, you know, we came down and we filled a gap. It just didn't happen. So, you know, this one here, especially, this is a, a really important gap. And it took, you know, from this moment here, from May 19, right through to December. So, you know, that's seven months, six, seven months to fill that gap. So if we look at this, um, we're in July now where this gap was. Uh, so if we go seven months, we're up in February and that's kind of when regulations are coming in with all the KYC with the exchanges. And that's when I expect we're going to get a, a deeper retrace as people pull their money out of Bitcoin because they don't want to have the KYC or they move it off exchanges or whatever. So yeah, that, that's kind of, at this point, this could happen. So we've got this gap here, and then February we fill that gap. Um, and uh, and I really think the sort of the nine thousand ish region will hold. So if you look at that as a whole, then we're coming down. So you know if we can get to sort of twenty eight to thirty thousand on Bitcoin, and we come back down, then that's a nice correction at that point after our five waves, and then we can start again. So we sell at 28 and we buy back at nine. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. So you put your orders back and you short it down. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll make a lot of money. I like the sound of that. So if we have a look at the, the total market cap as well, it's, um, it's just hit resistance. Uh, so we're, we're seeing a, a minor correction on Bitcoin at the moment and on a lot of the alts. So, um, this is a, a strong resistance line that we, we keep going back to. I really think we're going to pass this at the moment. Um, it's, we've got a lot of money pouring into the market and, you know, we really need to get to this halfway point just to sort of prove that crypto, you know, can get there, that we can get to these higher levels. So we keep, you know, rejecting before we get to this halfway point. We haven't got there since the all time high. So if we go right back, um, you know, so th this is kind of where we were at um, with our, our waves. I'll go to a higher time frame. Uh, we keep coming back to this, this point, this halfway point, and then rejecting and coming back down. So we've been there sort of two or three times. Um, our all-time high up here. I, I really think this time, if we can pass this halfway point, we're going to go, you know, $800 billion, which is massive. And I just think this money is going to start pouring in. Trade of the week this week, um, it's, a really, it's Decentraland, it's MANA. It's again in uh, this pitchfork formation, which I'm really loving. It's come to the, the side here. Our RSI is looking super bullish. We're coming up on a, a cross here on the MACD, a bullish cross. So, and it coincides almost perfectly. So we might see a little bit more of a drop on mana. Um, 
we're at the sort of the 10 cent mark on MENA and then uh, we should go up to about 18 cents on this. So we've got kind of a, that's a 80% move on MENA. This is my trade of the week. I think it's going to move this week. Um, I don't think, so sometimes the trades of the weeks take a, a little bit of time to sort of get into their positions. Um, but I think uh, Decentraland's a really good one and it's, it's going to start really sort of moving. And yeah, so 80% on this one uh, is my target uh, and my sell point around there. And I will be laddering in around this region. I don't think we're going to break down. I think all the indicators are pointing to we are going up very soon. Some other cool news, guys, that you can see is that in Japan, a lot of Japanese traders are ditching XRP and Mona for Bitcoin. How can you see that? You can see that on this chart. Bam! On this chart, you can see the Bitcoin dominance. Like you can see on this chart, the Bitcoin dominance now in Japan is 87.3%. This is coming from 60%, so all the way up to 87.3%. And you can see that the dominance of the XRP and the Mona are dropping tremendously. So that means that all the people are, and all these Japanese people are ditching their XRP and Mona for Bitcoin, which makes Bitcoin the biggest coin in Japan with a dominance at the moment of 87.3%. This is a huge difference with the dominance of Bitcoin worldwide because Bitcoin is now near the low of the last 12 months, that's around 58%. So if we see the dominance of other cryptos in this market, we need to take a look at this chart. Bam! You can see Bitcoin 58%, Ethereum 12.9%, Tether 2.68%, then we get Chainlink with 1.55%, interesting. Then we get BCH with 1.38%, Litecoin with 1.1%, BSV just below the 1% with 0.97%, Crypto.com with 0.94%, also very interesting in my opinion, BNB with 0.91%, and all the others combined is around 16%. So you can see the BTC dominance is only 58%. This is one of the lowest points in the last 12 months, but in Japan already 87%. Maybe Japan is setting an example. Satoshi Nakamoto sounds Japanese to me. So maybe Japan is setting an example and Bitcoin will rise again out of the ashes all the way up to 87 dominance. 87% of dominance worldwide. We will see. I don't think that will happen. I think it's a very high number now. So in the next couple of months, this DeFi industry will become a bigger hype. So many other currencies like ethereum for example will profit out of this whole DeFi hype and that's why i think that for example ethereum's dominance is growing at the moment but also of course if you look at these new projects like chainlink taking 1.5 percent etc this is all you know eating away from the dominance of bitcoin we will see what will happen during this next bull run mostly the bitcoin dominance when bitcoin starts to run people start to exchange their altcoins again into bitcoin to take this bull run with bitcoin and then the dominance of bitcoin will increase again so let's see what will happen to this bitcoin dominance in the next couple of weeks by the way did you see my new t-shirt bam bitcoin generation x i am mined on 26th of may in 1978 yes generation x do you like this shirt i have these shirts of generation x generation y generation z i have them even as a boomer shirt so check the shop thebitcoinfamily.com i understand you're not all born on the 26th of may in 78 so this cool piece of text this one this part of the text this one you can of course customize to your own birthday you can also change the text mind to anything else only about 15 dollars in store and 25 percent again of these profits go to charity so take a look at our shop to these cool shirts of the bitcoin generation x proud to be a bitcoin generation x person and why am i proud to be a bitcoin generation x person i said bitcoin generation x now many times in the last couple of minutes but why am I very proud to be a Bitcoin, genera Bitcoin Generation X person? I'm going to tell you now. Because I am from 1978, Generation X, I can see how much all my cost of living have increased since I was born. 
I can also see how much the wages all over the world have increased since I was born. So I'm going to share these numbers with you guys from the year I was born and then you can see why I was forced, <laughs> why I was forced by the world to step into this beautiful world of Bitcoin and the revolution of cryptocurrencies and blockchain that are going to change this whole monetary system for the better. Because if we take a look at what happened since I was born in 78, the cost of college increased with 1120%. The cost of medical care increased with 601%. The cost of housing increased with 380%. Probably the reason why I don't own a house anymore. And meanwhile, guys, the salaries of the average worker, yes, hugely increased with 10%. So thousands of percent, 600% more cost, and a salary, salary increase since 78 of about 10%. Even worse, if we take a look at the minimum wage, the, minim the minimum wage didn't even increase, the minimum wage decreased with 5.5%. But these numbers are, of course, for the normal workers, the CEOs in our world, they increased their salary with 930%. But even the salary increase of the CEOs with 930% can, is not comparable with the increase of cost, because you pay 1100 more for your study. You pay 600% more for your medical care. You pay 400% more for your housing. So even these CEOs that now have 930% more in salary, even they are fucked because they were from Generation X. A Generation X that is fucked by the government and by many other centralized institutions. But again, that is also the reason why we are a proud Generation X that is now supporting the Bitcoin revolution and stepping into this industry to create a new monetary system for the next generation, my kids and your kids, because we are going to make sure that they won't get fucked over this bad as we as Generation X were. That was all the info for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give the video a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified on every new video, and please leave a comment. Leave a comment if you think that we indeed were fucked as a Generation X, and please keep it a little bit decent in the comments. Yes, I know I am not the best example. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But again, thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing Monday and I hope to see you back tomorrow again on Tuesday. Bye.